Hey everyone, today we're talking about Amazon Athena. Let's go do a little bit of theory and then we'll come back here to the console to do some hands-on. The idea with Athena is that you've got some data stored in S3, maybe log files or order data, really any kind of data. And using Athena, you can write SQL statements to query that data. And from there, you could even analyze and visualize it with a service called QuickSight, write reports and dashboards and all of that. We're not going to be working with the QuickSight part in this video, but we'll get this top part working, being able to query S3 using SQL. Amazon Athena is serverless, which means that the underlying compute is all handled for you. You don't have to go spin up database instances, for example, or manage them or tear them down. It all just automatically happens. Athena executes queries in parallel, so you're going to get really fast results for your queries. Some use cases would be to query logs in AWS, like CloudWatch, VPC flow logs, CloudTrail, and so on, or just in general, any kind of business intelligence or analytics work that you're doing. But essentially, any kind of use case where you want to use SQL queries for your data in S3. All right, so back to the console. I got here just by coming up to Athena here on the top services menu. And there's a big picture diagram here of how it works, pointing to our data source. Athena will allow us to query that using SQL statements, and then we can analyze the results. But before we go set all of that up, just a quick word about pricing over here. I'll open up the cost calculator. And scrolling down, with Athena, you only pay for the data scanned by the queries that you run. And you'll see the price down here, $5 per terabyte of data scanned. We are definitely not going to be scanning terabytes of data, maybe kilobytes of data. So if you're following along with me, this might cost you one or two cents US dollars, but make sure you stick around to the end and I will walk you through how to delete everything that we spin up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is an S3 bucket to store some data. I'll open up a new tab. Navigate to S3. And then we'll create a new bucket. Now make a note of which region you're in. I am currently in Oregon in US West 2. You'll need to be in the same region when we get to Athena. So just make a note of that. But I'll create a bucket. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine files for Athena and a date just for something unique. You can leave all of the default settings for everything else and then create the bucket. Success, I will view details to go to the bucket. And then we're going to need some data to upload. I have a CSV file here of order information. This is just sample data that I generated using ChatGPT, so feel free to create your own, or I will also upload this and link it below in the description if you want to use my file. But we want to upload this file to our S3 bucket. So I've got the file here, orders CSV. I'll upload that by dragging it over and then say Upload. OK, perfect. So back to Athena. We've got the data in S3, and now we need to work on the Athena bits or the query bits. So up here, there's a nice getting started dialog. We're going to go with this top one here, Query Your Data with Trino SQL. If you haven't heard of Trino, this is an open source project with various features that the Athena query engine uses. There's a bunch of new SQL functions, query optimization, that kind of thing. You don't really need to know Trino. It's just kind of baked into Athena. But that's what we're going to be using. There is also support for PySpark and Spark SQL, but we're going with the top option and Launch Query Editor. Now, if this is the first time you're using Athena, you're going to get prompted up here at the top to set a location for query results. As you're running SQL queries, those results get shown in the browser here, but they're also saved as CSV files, and we need somewhere to store those in S3. So we actually need to go create a second bucket for this. So back to S3. I'll just back up to all of the buckets and create another bucket. This is only something you'll need to do the first time, or you can also change the setting later if you want to. But let's create a new bucket. I will call mine Athena results and a date. Feel free to call yours whatever you want, and then we'll create the bucket. And now that that's created, we can come back to Athena and go to Edit Settings. 
browse S3, and we'll choose that bucket for results that we just created. I'll filter mine by Athena. Mine was this one right here, Athena results, and choose. You can leave everything else the defaults and say save. All right, here's what we have so far. And you could be forgiven for thinking, well, I just need to go into the query editor and start writing queries against the data in that bucket. So for example, just back out here, we could say select star from, but from where? Do we just put in the path to the S3 bucket? There's really nowhere to select that. And you'll also notice all the things over here on the left about data source and catalog and database and tables and views and all of that. There's nothing that says, oh, just point to that location in S3. So how does all of this work? Well, spoiler alert, you can't just write SQL statements against a bunch of files in S3 any more than you could write SQL statements against a bunch of files sitting on your hard drive. We need some kind of an engine or intelligence that even knows what SQL is and what to do with all of the data. So if we look around for that magic thing, we do have an option here to create a table, and that looks promising. And we could create it from the S3 bucket data. But what about all this other stuff here? So a quick review of terminology. For each data set you want to query, so in my case, I've got orders data out in S3, I need a table for it in Athena. And the table just stores metadata about your S3 data. It does not store your actual data. So don't think of this as a relational database, for example, where you're just copying your data in there. Your data will continue to live in S3, but in Athena, we've got a table with data about your data. This includes things like where the data lives in S3, the structure of it, so is it JSON, is it CSV, and so on, the name of the table, column types, and data types. And then a database, as you might expect, is just a group of tables. This is sometimes called the schema. And then moving up a level, a group of databases is called the data source. Sometimes this is just called the catalog. And Athena uses the AWS Glue data catalog. Back to the console, you'll see that here. That is our default, even though we really haven't done anything here yet. So when Athena is storing and retrieving metadata, running queries and whatnot, it's doing it against the AWS data catalog. Now, AWS Glue is a whole different service. It's used for preparing and managing your data for analytics, a little bit beyond what we're doing here. But it is also integrated with Athena, as we can see here. If you want me to do a video about AWS Glue, drop me a comment below. And also, while you're at it, to give me a thumbs up on the video if you're finding it helpful so far. Thank you so much. OK, so starting at the foundation of this whole structure, we need our tables. So back here to this Create button, there are three different ways we can create the table. And all three of these are going to register the table with the AWS Glue data catalog so they can be queried. So that plumbing, sort of hooking everything up, is going to happen automatically for you when you create the table. So it doesn't really matter how you go about it, but let's just briefly look at some options. If we say S3 bucket data, if you choose this option to create your table, you'll need to fill in a bunch of stuff manually. You'll browse for the data in S3. You need to say this is the data format. You'll need to fill in your column details, IAM roles, and so on. So totally fine to do this, but you will need to have a good understanding of your data already. Let's back up and look at the other options. If you use the AWS Glue crawler, this is going to go crawl your data, automatically figure out the data format, the structure, the name of your columns. It'll create the table in the Glue data catalog. I personally find this one a little bit easier than some of the other options. And then you can also just write a SQL statement over here in your query editor to create the table. But we're going to go with the Glue crawler. So let me open this up in a new tab. And we'll get this part going. For crawler name, I will call this my first Glue crawler and then say next. And then we need to point it at our data in S3. So we'll add a data source pointing to S3. You'll see that there's lots of other places that it can grab data from, though. So this is not just restricted to S3. 
the location of the data. You can go cross account here, which is good to know, but ours is in our account, so we just need to browse S3. My bucket was called Files for Athena, and choose that. We should be able to leave the default to everything else and say add an S3 data source. Then next. And then we need to configure our security settings. So the IAM role is going to give AWS Glue permissions to go crawl or work with your data. If you have one of these roles set up already, you can just select it. But we're going to create a new one. The prefix will always be AWS Glue service role. We can just leave that. And I'll just add TTT and a date. You can update yours as you see fit. We'll say create. So that created the role. It automatically selected it for us. Now we can say next. I'll just close out of this message. Now we need to deal with the output configuration. So the crawler is going to go crawl our data in S3 and create a table for it. So we talked about that table that's holding the metadata and so on, but it needs to know where to put that table. What database does it live in? And remember, a database is just a collection of tables. So if you had a database, you could add a table to that existing database, but we're going to create a new one since we don't have one yet. So add database. I'll call mine my first database, and then we'll create it. But I will point out that here we don't have to go create a new database instance, spin up a new EC2 instance or anything like that. Remember that Athena is serverless, so all of the work of setting up that underlying infrastructure is happening behind the scenes. We just give it a name, which is pretty nice. So we'll say create database. There we go. Now we need to go back to that previous tab that we were on here. You'll probably need to refresh and select my first database. So when the crawler is done, it's going to create the table in this database, and that's going to hold our metadata. And speaking of crawlers, we need to set up the schedule down here. We're going to just do ours on demand. So we just click a button that says go crawl our data. You can do this on a schedule though, hourly, daily, weekly, whatever. The choice here really depends on your data, how often you're getting new data, or how often it changes, and that kind of thing. But let's go with on demand and say next. Review everything here and create the crawler. Okay, we have the crawler now. Let's go ahead and run it. So this is going to crawl our data for the first time, go out to S3, discover what's out there, grab the metadata, create the table, and put it in the database, my first database. You can see the status down here. Depending on how much data you have, this could take a little while. We don't have too much data, so it should be pretty quick. But I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. And success. Okay, so let's go see what that crawler did. If we come over here to databases, there's my first database. So we created that as part of setting up the crawler. But if we look at the tables inside of that now, we've got a table named files for Athena. So it's just getting that name based on the name of our bucket. You can change that if you want. But if you click into it and then scroll down to schema, here's the metadata for our table. So we've got the column names, we've got the data types. The actual data, as we've said, still lives in S3, but this is the data about the data, basically. All right, so here's what we have so far. We've got the CSV file in the S3 bucket, and then we have the AWS glue part. We crawled that bucket using the AWS glue crawler that automatically detected things like the columns, the data types, all that stuff that we just saw, and it put it into a new database that we created. The crawler also registered the table with the AWS Glue data catalog, and now we can write statements in Athena to grab the data out of the catalog and give us results. So let's do that part next. I'm going to come back to our original window here, the query editor. You might need to refresh things over here on the left, on the data pane. There we go. So you'll see that we have a table now, files for Athena. I've got my columns, my data types, and all of that in here. And then up here, it's also selected the database, AWS Data Catalog, which is the default. So now we can write a SQL query against the data. So let's just go with select star from, and our table name here, files for Athena. You get some nice autocomplete or IntelliSense. I can just hit the tab to accept that name. And maybe let's just grab 10 records. So I'll do limit 10, and then run the query. 
Okay, so scrolling down, here is the data coming out of S3. Yay! Excellent! Now you can write additional queries. You can open up new query windows by clicking the plus up here. You can save these queries, put them in source control, whatever you want to do. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Maybe find the top five customers by their total spend. I would just paste this one in rather than forcing you to watch me type. And this is obviously not a video about how to write SQL, but all of the stuff that you're used to writing, the syntax, the functions, and all of that are available here in the query editor. So let's run this one. And we should get back the top five customers by total spend. Perfect. Now in the real world, you would probably have multiple files, like one for customers, one for products and all of that. You can join them with a SQL statement, all the regular stuff that you can do in a relational database. We're just keeping things simple here, but you can copy the query results and you can also download them. So if I hover over that, you'll see that it's pointing to an S3 bucket, Athena results. That's the bucket that we created in the very beginning and said output the results to this bucket. It's just a CSV file, so I could download that CSV and do whatever I wanted with it. So this is the basics of working with Athena to query your S3 data. It's serverless. There is a little bit of setup work, as we saw initially, to set up your database and your tables and your crawlers and all that. But once you've got that set up, you can write queries for days and really use the power of SQL to make sense of your data. All right, before I let you go, let's go delete everything that we stood up. We saw that pricing is based on the queries that you run. So in theory, it doesn't hurt to just have stuff out there, but I always like to clean it up just in case. So back in our query editor, let's delete our table. You can just click the dot, dot, dot here and delete table. Enter the name of the table and delete. Let's come back to the AWS glue console here and look at our databases. If you have closed this out, it's over here on the left, Navigation, Databases. Just select the database and say Delete. And you'll notice that when I did that, I have a default database now. There's really nothing in here and it's not gonna hurt you to delete it. So I will just get rid of mine. We also had the crawler. This won't hurt you to just leave it, but let's just go clean everything up. I've actually got two that I was using to practice. So action, delete crawlers. And then we also had the S3 buckets. So let's go unhook our S3 bucket for the output results. So back here to our query editor and settings. Currently, the results of the queries are going to this Athena results bucket. So we'll need to disconnect that, say manage, and then we can delete the bucket. But just X out of that here and save. And then if we come back to S3, we have two buckets we need to clean up. So I will filter by Athena. First was the results. That's the one that we just basically disconnected. So I can delete that bucket. There's going to be stuff in there and you can't delete a bucket that has stuff in it. So first we need to empty the bucket and we'll say permanently delete. And then once that bucket is empty, then you can click on this link to actually delete the bucket. We'll enter the name of the bucket and delete. And then we had one other bucket to delete. This was the one that the CSV file was in. So files for Athena, I'll delete. Same steps here, we need to empty the bucket first. And then we can actually delete it. And delete. All right, that does it for this video. Nice work. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up on the video so YouTube knows to share it with more people. And also think about subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.